But it does feel like this conflict is already spilling over to some extent a little bit closer to home with chants of jihad on the streets of London. Now, the Home Secretary, Suella Bravman, will question the Metropolitan Police Commissioner, Sir Mark Rowley, about the force's response to incidents during the pro-Palestinian protests this weekend. Yes, she'll challenge the officer's decision to take no action on a jihad chant insisting that there can, she will insist, that there can be no place for incitement to hatred or violence on UK streets. She's been quite strong on this in the past couple of weeks or so since uh, Hamas launched their attack on Israel. Now, we've got Ben Habib in the studio, the deputy leader of Reform, to speak to us about this. We just heard from Mark White in terms of what's happening in Israel and Gaza, also the threat of Hezbollah in the north. But here closer to home, as Tom said, what, let me just get your reaction of what we saw on the streets of London and elsewhere. Well, Suella Braverman made an excellent speech in Washington, which you, I'm sure, will recall a few mm. weeks ago. And then she followed it up with a similar speech at the Conservative Party conference, um, citing the existential threat that she described that Western liberal democracies, and including the United Kingdom, faced from multiculturalism not working. And we've seen that on the streets of London. That is the physical manifestation of the speech that the excellent speech that Suella Braverman made very brave speech from a cabinet minister she got a lot of criticism for it but she called it and she called it right mm. and we see our metropolitan police cowed into inactivity for fear of upsetting this minority whatever this minority is because it's a it's rather, it's it's not straightforward to pinpoint who these people are that are promoting you know this the, this sort of venom on our streets but the metropolitan police absolutely had the right and indeed the obligation to make arrests there is something called the racial and religious hatred act 2006 which prohibits incitement against minority ra against races not minority, against any kind of race, racial hatred or religious hatred, and an incitement to jihad against obviously Israel or the Jewish faith is a fundamental breach of that act. Mm. It is a criminal offence. So you don't, I'm sure you've seen the statement from the Met Police with yeah, regards and to I the word with jihad, them. and they said, oh, it has, you know, it lots does. of alternative meanings, it doesn't jihad. necessarily mean a call to violence. No. Jihad, I mean, to be clear, he's absolutely right. Of course, jihad means the meritorious struggle in the pursuit of good. Mm. That's what it fundamentally means. And it applies as much to an inner struggle for mm -hmm. the pursuit of good as it does for, for, for the outward struggle. I suppose struggle. it's an open but, interpretation how many of the people on the streets of London shouting it outwardly are talking about an inner struggle within themselves. No, so I think that, that stretches the realms of the talking about Muslim <laughs> armies. Yes. I mean, you've got, to, you've got to look at what the uh, man on the Clapham omnibus would think of this. And it's clearly an incitement to violence. And the Met Police have repeated failed to do their job when they're faced with these kinds of difficult issues on the streets. They will crack down dramatically on anti-lockdown protests. They crack down dramatically on anyone who objected to BLM uh, attacking Winston Churchill's statue or those rights mm. back in and, 2020. And, and, yet they, and yet, whilst they crack down on women's rights protesters for protesting during lockdown after the murder of Sarah Everard, they didn't crack down on Black Lives Matter protests Absolutely. who protested during lockdown. It's a, it's, it's a similar sort of uh, two-tier justice system Absolutely. that we're seeing here. Well, our police are politicised, and they shouldn't be. They need to be depoliticised, they need to enforce the law, and they need to be blind to colour, blind to race, blind to ethnic origin, blind to religious preferences, and so on and so forth. But they're not. And this is where our culture and our society is being hijacked. It's being hijacked, by the way, by a series of regulations and laws put in place by Parliament, starting with Tony Blair in 2006, and then a series of the other laws, which have come to protect these sort of malicious, malign parts of our society attacks. So, for example, the Equalities Act is meant to protect you against any discrimination, whether it be on age, your sex, colour, race, and so on. But the Equalities Act has come to be interpreted and implemented 
against the interests, and I would say arguably the most prejudiced against individual in this country, is a white, middle-aged man who happens to be heterosexual. He gets no protection under the Equalities Act. He is prejudiced against. And what we've well, seen think, on the street. I think streets, some minorities might disagree that that's the most prejudiced against individual in well, the country. Well, if, if you look at the regulations that govern business, for example, a listed mm. company, you're, you're required to promote diversity, equality and inclusion. You're required to have a diverse board of directors. You're required to have women on the board, which is, which is all kind of fine. But w w what that is, is the embedding, the, the, sorry, it's not fine, the the emotional bedrock on which it's based is fine, but the practical implications of what they're doing is to embed mm -hmm. discrimination. And it is discrimination against the majority. This is what I would call the, you know, the tyrannical rule of the minority. That is what the effect of these regulations and laws have become. I wonder if, if the police were concerned about appearing to target Muslims, target a religious, a religious but it's not, minority, and that's why they find it easier to police, I don't know, football hooligans. But Emily, it's not or, their job to make that No, of decision. course it's not. Yeah. Of course well, it's I th not. I think it's, it's the same reason that some police won't go after a mobile phone that's stolen, because it's probably not worth their effort. I think they, they will more likely knock on a door of someone who's done a nasty tweet, because frankly it's an easier, easier. job to do, and they're less likely to get pushback. Perhaps that's part of it. Um, ben Habib, we have run out of time, but I really Aww. do thank you for your thank you. Uh, input here. And uh, what an interesting discussion it has been.